Yeah, and to the point of Elon Musk, it's like if anyone is going to accomplish these insanely ambitious ideas, it's him because he's been doing them all his life. And the more the more you do it, and it's never too late, too. And, I mean, back to the whole point of this podcast, as it is episode one, is yeah. that's why I'm doing it, is like... I. I never really imagined myself being a broadcaster other than the times where I think I should probably do this podcast. Yeah. Um, but if I, the, the sooner I do it, the more, the better I'm going to get. And it's never too late. I mean, I wanted to do this a year ago, but it was just like I had other things come up that I was like, hey, I already know how to do that. So, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Whereas this, it's like finally now we're like stuck in our homes with nothing to do. And I'm like... I'm going to start it. I'm going to get, I'm going to go after it. And hopefully it inspires other people to do the same thing. I know a lot of people that are like stuck at home getting after it and saying, you know, they've never been a better version of themselves because they're, right. they're finally throwing their time into art and, and well being. And yeah, they might be a little lonely, but uh, at the same time we have like such a crazy platform of social media now to like connect with people I feel like I'm talking to my friends more than when I was like out on the road begging them to come to shows <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man yeah. <laughs> and you were honestly I really do believe that uh, this is for, for everyone who's like listening to this for the first time honestly this has been a deal for me that I always believed that uh, Mike Liordi was um, he's just a serious uh, ambassador when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, everything that he's advocated about me and the fact that he's saying um, that, 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 that you're such a... That, that, that to me, you're just such a strong advocate for um, just try it and just do it. And if it doesn't work out, then okay, hey, it didn't work out. And it didn't, it didn't quite work out the way that we wanted it to. Right. But hey... Um, there's a guy that's literally starting up one more time that I'm sitting in front of this guy that's just trying something new that I know for a fact is uh, might seem a little shaky and a little off and maybe in your mind, but I can tell you for a fact, dude, um, this is definitely going to work out for you and um, all you got to do is just keep on doing it because you're already off to a hell of a start and the fact that um, you have the ability to literally just... Um, it, it, say what you want to say and then sit back and you take in the listen and then you learn and that's what the whole point literally um, as I that's fumble with I, the camera that's what I <laughs> honestly I feel like that's what the whole point of like even just something as simple as that of just trying shit out for the very first time that a lot of stuff that you just you don't know how this is really going to go mm -hmm. other than the fact that you can try you can plan it in your head or you can try all you want to like oh, plan it's always shit perfect in your head yeah always <laughs> until the moment you literally sit down and you actually start doing it and then that's when the real scare part it's that it literally all goes back to at the end of the day i feel like it always just goes back to overcoming fear of yeah. we we have those two options and you've heard it tons of times people have heard it tons of times all you got to do is jesus christ just go click on a fucking daily mo motivation video and yeah. go listen to denzel washington or go listen to jim carrey's yeah. speech a hundred million times and oh, talking yeah, about the only thing difference in life is between love and fear and it's like actually it because it's true it really is it's 100 percent genuine when it's the fact that you either are dealing in fear or you are dealing in love. And if you can combine both, and you can literally combine the fear with l the love of knowing how bad I'm going to hate this. So, yeah. uh, parts of it, not maybe all of it. In this sense, you're doing something that you absolutely love and might not like some of the things that are going to happen to you. But either way, you still got a fear that's going on before you did it. And you still had a fear that was still crippling, that might have been crippling in a little way. And that reward of overcoming it is just like literally like it's honestly like it is you you can't you can't put a price on this reward. There is no uh, there, other than the fact that you literally just the, this feeling of this wonderful feeling that you that in, encompasses every single part of your body that you wish that you could you could just share actually with other people. <laughs> yeah, and it might take years. Like it might take years until you feel that fulfillment. And uh, it's true, especially musically. Um, for me on the um, insecure, pessimistic side of listening back to my own music. Because obviously when you make your first uh, recording, you think it's the greatest sounding thing in the world. But That's then true. you get that like moment of insecurity where you're like, shit, maybe I'm not so good at this. Um, but exactly. uh, uh, but then on the, on the flip side of that, and that's, you know, the ongoing struggle of being any sort of artist or creator is like, you're, you're proud of something. And then, um, 
the next day or the next hour or minute, you're embarrassed of something. Yeah. And that's because you love it. And that's, and it's the same thing about having a fear of getting on stage or getting in front of a camera or hitting record is you get that red light syndrome because you're red so light, passionate right. about it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's another thing I want to talk to you about. I have it on my little cheat sheet is I feel like you don't get the red light fear, especially drumming or singing. Like, Not you, anymore. You never had it even when you were in the band, though. Like, If people were recording, that pressure pushed you further. When I subconsciously, yeah. I want to be the best when, when a camera's on me, especially. Yeah. But that thought trips me out to having my worst takes and performances of all time. You got it. Because it's being documented. It's because it's being recorded. You want it to be absolutely right. And you want it to do everything in your head. You have this big deal of like wanting it to be so right and wanting it to be so awesome. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of producers hate my guts for really? how many times that I would get. I did, now, back in the day, I did. I actually did get mm -hmm. red light fright, but it was more of uh, I worked on something so confidently. I would take like that million and one hours with one song to work on it for that many times and try and get it exactly perfect, exactly the perfection of the way that I wanted it to be. And then that would force take away the red light fright. Then you start screwing up, and you start getting really mad at yourself for screwing up. And then I would start throwing drumsticks and start getting really pissed and <laughs> pacing the entire room yeah. and screaming into the microphone until I had to watch the producer turn off the mic because he couldn't listen to me screaming in the room anymore. And just, uh, I would get really, really, really mad. But it was more of, a, I was in this internal war and endless competition with myself. 